Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Nakuya Nampaya Sianika. If you are new here, you are most welcome. On this channel, we talk about lifestyle, health, and fitness. So if that's what you are interested in, please make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notifications for future videos. Today's topic is contraceptives. And we are going to talk about which contraceptives are safe and how safe are they. Hopefully it will help you decide on what contraceptive method you can use. And we can classify contraceptives into physiological barrier methods, hormonal methods, and surgical methods, and also emergency contraceptives. So those are five classifications. So... For the physiological methods, you have the withdrawal method. In this method, the male has to pull out or um, avoid ejaculating inside the vagina and yeah, basically pull out the penis and not ejaculate before, before he ejaculates. Yeah, this method is about 96%. Yeah, about 96% safe and um, of course this type of method does not prevent you from getting STIs if you um, if you have more than one sexual partner so that's a disadvantage of the physiological methods um, another type of physiological method is the calendar method where you um, mark your calendar to check when is your ovulation date and during that period of your ovulation so two days before your ovulation and two days after your ovulation that makes about five days during that period you're not supposed to engage in um, unprotected sex if you engage in sex it's better to use um, a barrier method a condom per se female condom male condom or to use a cervical cap or whatever kind of barrier that you can use to prevent yourself from getting pregnant then um, the number one physiological method that is safe 100% safe is abstinence so when you abstain you are protecting yourself 100% no pregnancies no STIs no complications of any kind so yeah um that's abstinence for you it's 100 percent safe so moving on to the barrier methods these are methods that um either a male or a female wears a condom and prevents the sperms from moving into the vagina so for the female condoms they are about they are about 95 percent safe and for the male condoms they are about 98 percent safe um these methods these these barrier methods there are other types of barrier methods as well like a diaphragm or a cervical cap and these ones mostly are supposed to be worn by the female where you insert something into the vagina that will go and close um on the cervix allow not allowing the sperm to move into the cervix into the uterus so they will form a barrier and um, these methods are very re reliable and they are safe to use for the female condom and the male condom these ones prevent you from even contracting STIs or HIV so if that's what you are hoping to do as you are having intercourse please make sure that you use a condom to prevent yourself from getting STIs and um, HIV and other sexual related diseases. So one thing you can look out for with these um, barrier methods is making sure that they are used correctly to prevent any kind of breakage um, either during the insertion or during uh, the wearing of the condom. And um, if anything happens, uh, maybe during the intercourse that causes a leak of fluid and 
um, there's exchange of fluid you might contract uh, diseases like STIs or you may even get pregnant moving on to hormonal methods so these methods use hormones to prevent pregnancies um, you can't rely on these methods to prevent STIs because there are no barriers or anything there are different types of hormones that you can use either the oral contraceptives or you can use injections you can use an implant all these use hormones so almost all the hormonal methods either it's oral contraceptives or um, injection or implant they are about 99.7 percent safe so if that's what you are looking to use then please go ahead and use it um, people react differently to all these uh, methods and so if you find that the hormones are not working well for you and they are causing you to um, bleed so much or they are causing other side effects like uh, gaining so much weight or um, yeah mostly people either gaining so much weight or bleeding so much you may decide to discontinue and try a different type of method either barrier method or you can even try the physiological methods the other type is surgical method and for the surgical methods they are very safe they are almost 100 percent so it's about 99.9 percent .9 safe if you are using the surgical method for the females they can have a tubectomy where the uh, fallopian tubes are cut and so you will not be able to ovulate for the males they have what it, what is called vasectomy for the vasectomy they cut the sperm duct and so the males will not be able to uh, produce or they will not be able to release stems then um, the other type of contraceptive is the IUD and for this one you can either use a hormonal IUD or a copper IUD and these are also very safe the IUD, the copper IUD is about 99.7% safe and the uh, hormone IUD is about 99.9% safe so they are quite safe though people react differently like i said um others might not be might not react well to the copper iud because they have allergies others they might react badly because they um they might be bleeding for very long periods of times for the copper iud i think most people do not get hormonal um, imbalances so they will not have any hormonal issues unlike the mirena where they will get hormonal imbalance and so um, they might have hormonal issues like gaining weight um, uh, bleeding in between periods the last type of contraceptives I'll talk about is emergency contraceptive these ones are about 98% safe um, and they can only be used within a certain period of time and you can't use them for a long time so you can only use it in an emergency case it's not like a, a plan where you say i'll be using emergency contraceptives every time i have sex maybe you're having sex every day in the weekend you're just using emergency contraceptives it doesn't work like that you have to use emergency contraceptives when it's an emergency you have to have a long-term plan on what contraceptive you are going to be using so that you are safe all the time all right i think that's it for the contraceptives i really do hope that i have covered every contraceptive if you have any questions please let me know um like i said people react differently and if one thing is not working for you try something else um I'm sure something will come up that will be able to that will work for you so if one thing is not working for you try something else you can talk to your doctor your gynecologist to help you and they will be able to give you guidance on what uh, you can use depending on your body type and other physiological uh, issues that you may have or if you have any other conditions they might um, refrain you from using certain contraceptives and recommend other types of contraceptives so talk to your gynecologist at the hospital and they will be able to give you more guidance and further information so thank you so much for watching the video please do subscribe to the channel and please do share the video with others 
um yeah don't forget to like the video thank you and god bless you bye bye